coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we will be talking about our top three cross-platform apps. Hi, my name is Ashley Roki. And I'm Guy Trainin. And this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge. And today we're talking about our top three cross-platform apps. And the idea behind cross-platform apps is if you've got a bring your own device or you have, because your schools have gone through multiple iterations of let's get devices of different kinds, these cross-platform apps allow you to work no matter what your students are using. And that's sometimes really, really helpful. And in the classrooms we're working with right now, there's a mixture. Teachers have a classroom device, usually an iPad, and then the students have uh, some form of a laptop or a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. So this allows you to work with everybody without any transition. So let's go with the first one. OK, the first app that I'm going to talk about is Nearpod, which mm -hmm. I know you've talked about in the past. Um, but this is really nice because it's a way to present information to students and they also have access to the information on mm -hmm. in front of them on their device. So they don't have to look up and then look down and do the work. Mm -hmm. It's actually all in front of them. Yep. And the second thing is, is the, that you as a teacher can control the pace that they're going through. Exactly. So you can make sure that they're getting the right things and they're moving ahead. So let's try a, a lesson. I have a few lessons, I've collected a few lessons over time, and let's try this one. And one of the things about all of these is that you can share lessons and you mm -hmm. can borrow lessons from other people. So here is a lesson that I have and I can activate it. All I have to do is say live session, and now you can enter on your device the pin U-O-N-F-G. That, that pin becomes invalid once I close the lesson. So and you can try and log in with that, but uh, it's probably not going to work. And now uh, the student's device sees exactly what I want them to see, so you can see that. But as a teacher, I can also scroll through and decide, let's jump to this page. So while you have an order just like in a PowerPoint, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stick with that order. So I can say, oh, let's jump to this page because that's what I want to share right now. And in a second or two, it comes on the student side and now they can see exactly what I want them to see. So this is a common mistake, rushing through text and I can move it, I can just move it by scrolling. Yeah, and the students cannot yeah. move it. So. so a student is locked into what I allow them to do or not allow them to do. And here's an example, right? So this is an example where it's highlighted and then the note is there, so you can see how this lesson works. And uh, for example, at the end, you can have questions. They can be open-ended or multiple choice. They can be even draw on top. So I just put in a question and now type in an answer. And you can see who's, which students are there. You can type in an answer. And now I get that response. And what you have to understand is I have that response and then I can decide to share it with everybody. So I can say, this is a great response and I can choose which ones to share. And that's uh, really important. And what's beautiful about this is the way it's shared is it doesn't identify the person who answered. Exactly. So if you, if you want to do an error analysis on somebody's response, you do, it doesn't shame them in any way. So this is Nearpod, it's great. Um, it's a great way to share uh, lessons. And again, it works across all devices. Okay, let's try with the next one. The next one is simple yet uh, essential and that is Google Docs. And Google Docs is fantastic because it allows you to uh, store all your documents online in the cloud and have any device to have access to them. And um, the app for Docs on the iPad is fantastic, I think, and it's gotten much better over time. And um, some of the features that are really important is the ability to uh, share with collaborators so I can just enter somebody's name. You can add participants that can then help edit the document or just view it and provide mm -hmm. feedback. As an instructor, I use it to uh, give comments on papers and then a student can just go in and make the corrections and I get to notice when they do make the corrections and resolve the comments that I put in. So Docs is an easy, easy way to have that kind of two-way communication while developing texts in real time. And, and again, the advantage is 
It works across devices. The other advantage is that uh, any device you go to, if you remember your uh, Google ID and password, you can immediately bring it up and start working, whether that device is yours, somebody else's, or anything. And that works. Again, Chromebooks are great for this, but iPads will handle it very, very well. So this is Google Docs. Last app. The last app mm -hmm. is Socrative, and this is a quiz app that you can use with your students so you can assess them. And there's a student side and a teacher side. Yes. So you're in a teacher, in a teacher a side and I have the student side right now on. Okay, we'll start a quiz. Looks like you have no quizzes. Let's create one. So we can create a quiz and you can create quiz on the go. You can actually uh, you can actually quickly also ask questions that are live, but right now we're creating a quick quiz. Shapes, okay. You can ask multiple choice. So let's do a question. And you can bring in a picture. We're not going to do that right now, but you can actually just using the plus, you can bring in a picture from your mm -hmm. device or from directly from the camera. So you just pick up your iPad and you take a picture and that's it. Okay. okay. And you can mark the correct answer on the side. All right. And save. Dave, we have a fantastic quiz with one question. <laughs> All right. And now the room number is going to be up here. And can you see room it? number 841. And you're going to share this with your students, and this is how they're going to access your quiz. There's a selection of how do you want to run that quiz. You mm -hmm. can write it at student paste, so students are moving ahead as they go along. Uh, or, and it can be with immediate feedback, which means that the It'll show them mm -hmm. what they got right or wrong, or it'll give them sample answers, or teacher paste. Teacher paste is great if you want to stop after each question, get the answers, share them, talk about the correct mm -hmm. answers, talk about common mistakes, and move on. So there's an advantage and a disadvantage. The disadvantage is if students are a lot slower than others, then you're not going to get there. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that a lot of teachers talk to us about when you use Socrative is have students use their real names or use a constant nickname yes. and not uh, inappropriate names or, or random names, names yeah. or anything. So you, something that is measurable because then you can also take the results and actually mm -hmm. use them and for grades if you want. And you can also turn off student names if you don't want. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let's start. And I need I eight for one. B H Y F C F C. So I'm logging in on my side, and now okay, I get to see I the see. question. Mm -hmm. And what you see on the screen is actually the fact that there's one student there. That number up on the right-hand corner will change as more students log in. Right now, there's only me. I give an answer and then I submit it, and the teacher can then see the response, and you can see how many students answered, you can show an explanation, and you can have a discussion. So this is a way for the teacher to show the results to everybody, but also it is possible to keep it all on the device. Mm -hmm. So today we talked about a few apps, our top three apps, that were cross-platform. So if you have a classroom with a multitude of devices that come from different places, these are three very safe apps that really would enhance your classroom instruction. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.